Hey guys, Jake with my bring back, and today we're going to be starting a new series, and this is kind of going to be get, catching everyone up with the Xcode 4.2 tutorial series. And what I mean by that is we did initially some Xcode 4 tutorials. There were some changes when Xcode 4.2 came out, and there was a little bit of confusion from the old tutorials, from the new SDK and all this stuff. So that's what we're going to do now is catch everyone up on some of the basics within Xcode 4.2 and then hopefully that'll bleed everyone together um, uh, you know basically up to 4.2 and everyone will be ready to take off from there so if you guys are a little bit more advanced and you know kinda what you're doing this probably is more of a beginner stage but uh, go check out the other tutorials on the Xcode 4.2 stuff and uh, as we catch these ones up so what we're going to do is we're going to download Xcode 4.2 and actually I've already got it but if you haven't downloaded it go to developer.apple.com or you can go to your Mac App Store. There's two places to get it so go to either one of those or just search Xcode and you'll find the download link eventually. But you need Xcode 4.2 to develop the iPhone applications or the iPad applications. So first go and download that. Once you download it, it'll take you a couple hours, but once you get it downloaded, you're just going to open up the Xcode. And when you open up Xcode, you're prompted with choosing a template within the project here. Now what you see is over to the left, you see the iOS, you've got application, you've got frameworks, you've got other, and then you've got the Mac OS, uh, OS X over to the left as well, which you can develop for Mac applications. In our case, we're going to be developing for the iOS devices and within our applications there's a few templates we can choose from so you can see we've got uh, master detail OpenGL game page based single view the list goes on you've got simple you know a basic empty application where you start from scratch um, so there are a few options to get you guys started on that now we're gonna go ahead and start with a tabs application and so what we're gonna do is select the tab application we're gonna click next now when you get when you click next you're gonna see we're prompted with another set of options where we give the product a name then we give it a company identifier and so on and so forth so this name we're gonna call is the simple starter and as far as the company identifier this comes into play when you guys release your applications you're gonna to have to put in a company identification and then also the it'll when it compiles it's gonna add as you can see it's going to add your bundle identifier with your product name here. So that basically gives it a, an identity in the Mac App Store, which uh, it has to be standalone. It can't be known by, or it can't be used by any other application out there. So in our case, we've used uh, the logic that uh, most people use as far as a backwards URL, mybringback.com, so on and so forth. So then the next thing that we go on to is class prefixes, which you can actually add these that will be added to your created classes. Um, we're just going to leave ours blank and we don't need any class prefixes but you could simply put ABC and anytime you implement a new class that ABC is going to be put on the, the beginning of your class there as a prefix. The next set of options is going to be the device families and this is, this is going to be crucial. If you're developing an iPhone you can select iPhone only if you're developing an iPad only, you can select iPad only. If you want to do a universal, if you want to do an application that does, that uh, can be ran both on iPhone and iPad, you can do that. So you can you can pick and choose that. I typically just go with universal. Even if I'm only developing in the iPhone currently, you can switch off the the iPad version so you don't have both of them running. So I would typically go with universal. It doesn't hurt you any to uh, to go with just the universal device family or one or the other. So that's up to you guys. Okay, now the new thing is the Xcode 4.2. This storyboard. The storyboard's huge because it basically in Xcode 4 we used to have zibs, xibs, and those were where we where we designed the user interface. The storyboard basically takes all the dex .xib files that we've designed in the past and it puts them all into one area that's really nice to manage and we'll show you that here in the next tutorial. 
and so I would select using storyboards it makes it very simple it makes it very easy to connect and uh, see where your application is moving the flow of controls and everything like that so select use storyboard the next thing is going to be the use automatic reference counting and I had done a tutorial about this in the past but just to go over it really quickly you you basically don't have to release your objects and the memory management is handled a little bit by the compiler there are some you know nuances to that you gotta be careful of but we'll, we'll touch base on that when you get to them um, as far as that keep it selected it's gonna be very helpful especially with what, where we're going with uh, our applications it's gonna be very helpful for what you guys are doing and then include unit test Now this is a little bit more advanced it has some features for testing on the side that you can run duplicate your systems and all that so I usually leave it selected you don't necessarily need it to build an application to start so going uh, from there you're gonna click next and this is where you're gonna save where you wanna choose where you wanna save your application and voila we are launched into Xcode 4.2 with our project developed so that was kind of an intro to getting to this point in the next tutorial we're gonna give a little bit of a tour of the new Xcode 4.2 and the features behind it and then hopefully we'll uh, continue forward uh, to get caught up to the other tutorials that we're doing so that's uh, kind of the basics hope you guys uh, liked it if, uh, if it's a little bit uh, too beginnerish take a look at some of the future tutorials and uh, and then we'll get everything caught up and start moving moving forward a little bit faster alright we'll catch you guys in the next tutorial